<laughs> I don't know about you, but I've had a slow week. <laughs> it's been slow. Some people have been doing really good, but not me. <laughs> it's been slow. I think because of all the rain we had, uh, I think the fish got mad and they left and they didn't want to bite. But despite the fact that it's been a slow week, I'm going to show you a few ways that can help improve your chances of catching fish here on Oak Island. And also, I'm going to give an update on my kingfish rig and let's talk about fireworks. <laughs> All right, let's go. Talk. My favorite subject, let's talk holes. What we got here, where these guys are walking, you can see there's a sandbar out there and it comes right out there. And you could walk and stand right there, it would be ankle deep, but right here, it's seriously deep, maybe four feet. So that's a great place to fish as the tide comes up. But watch this, this current is going out and it's going out right there. So that's a great place to fish. I'm gonna put my money on that spot right now. I'm gonna take this rod and I'm gonna cast it out right there because anything that was in this hole is getting swept right out to there and the fish are gonna be waiting with their mouths open like nom nom nom, I'm ready to eat it. So you can see it real well in this illustration. You can see the deep water and the sandbar where it's really low. And the water's going to come in across the tide, across that sandbar there, and the fish are going to come in there too. And all the little stuff's going to get swept out into the deep water. So I want to fish right where this X is. You could also fish in front of that sandbar here and here. Those are going to be great spots. Now the next thing you want to think about is using fresh or live bait. And one of the things you can do is you can dig for sand fleas. Now I've had some hit or miss experiences uh, this year. I've had a couple spots like right here where I just dug down maybe six inches. I'm holding the sand as I pull it up. You can see my hand, I'm kind of squeezing it. And when I feel one of those little buggers, I grab onto it and I pull them out and I throw them in my cup. So if you can have some fresh sand fleas, man, Black drum love them, the whiting are going to love them, pompano are going to love them, so that's a great free bait you can get. If you can't get any, you can try to get some frozen ones. They do sell them at the Sporting Goods Shop on the island. Or if not, get some fresh bait. If you can get live shrimp, do that. But if not, get fresh shrimp as opposed to frozen shrimp. This time of year, I think we need to use the fresh. It's going to be better for what we're trying to do. If you don't know how to put a sand flea on a hook, here's what I do. I will hook it in the back and then there's a little flappy thing right there and I would just stick the top of the point in that flappy thing. And the fish are gonna go for the eggs that are underneath the flappy thing. So that's where they're gonna hit it. Here's your next tip. I've always thought if you are catching croaker, you're casting out too far. The croaker just live out further, and you can see right here I made that mistake, and I was casting out really far because I wanted to get past the sandbar and see if there was anything out there, and yes there was, there were croaker. I don't like croaker, nothing like croaker, they're just big heads. So he's going back in the water, and I'm going to see if I can catch another fish. Alright, I want to give you an update on my kingfish rig. This is the new one. I bought a one-way sliding rig, which I'll explain later on in the video, but it attaches to a monoliter and then the monoliter to some American fishing wire where I put the bait. And the idea is the fish is supposed to slide down the line. So let me show you how it works. The first thing I do is I walk out there with a the rod and just a spudnik on the end of the line. The, the bait's not on there, the hook's not on there, it's just a spudnik. And I go out as far as I possibly can and I cast that spudnik as far as I possibly can. The idea is to get that weight way out there. Then I come back to shore and I attach the the one-way slider and the bait and I let that slide down the line so here you can see the fish is sliding right down the line getting a little bit deeper and when I get back to shore I jig a little little bit and that's supposed to help the fish slide some more so the idea is the fish can swim and slide all the way down to that spudnik as far as I cast it the problem is what I didn't anticipate is the fish um, because having the monoliter on the rig itself wrapped himself up around the braid and it basically just stopped the whole thing from sliding so here's an illustration on what I'm talking about, what happened. So we're going to go on to rig number four, and I'll show you how that works in a minute. But first, my son opened up a fireworks stand over by Midway Lowe's. So why don't we go over there and check out the fireworks that are for sale for the 4th of July. Welcome to Oak Island Fireworks on Midway. <laughs> I'm your host, Grayson Sands. Stop by, get a grab bag. So tell me about the grab bag here. Only $50. No, that's a lie. They're $150. <laughs> what? Yeah. Access to this beautiful bag. What a great deal. Full of all kinds of assorted fireworks. You don't even know what's in it. What do we have at this table here? Um, lots of baby stuff. Oh no, baby stuff. <laughs> tanks are cool. I like tanks. So this is the this is the baby stuff. Smoke bombs. 
the fun stuff for the kids. What's this right here? This one's fun. <laughs> Sir dumps a lot. This is the big stuff, okay? You got your sparkle berries, purple rain, purple rain. Pur I think when you light these, it actually sings. And then you got your kits, like you got your smaller kits here. This is a top seller, by the way. I think this is the 49er. And then they go up larger and larger kits. And then, whoa, the perfect show. And then the centennial. Man, and there might be even some bigger ones in these boxes over here. We haven't unloaded those yet, so we're gonna. Here's the big moment. Wow. Wow. Grab one out. It looks like a fish. Uh, we caught one. <laughs> that is hot. What does it do? Wow. That's a bass fish shaped fountain. A bass fish shaped fountain. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's that's what, it, what does. it does right there in the back, so you can just see. You can go on the TNT app and, and look at this, this code. Really? in augmented reality. Really? And see what it actually looks what like. What is that app? Go on the app store and search TNT. Wow, I didn't or know that. Or scan this code. So back to fishing, two other ways you can improve your chances. Number one is using fresh or live bait. Do you know how to hook a shrimp? You put it in the gray spot right between the two black spots above the horn. As long as you don't hit the black spots, you're not hitting its brain and it'll stay alive. Unfortunately, this shrimp had already died, but he was still fresh. So I had a really good feeling I could catch a fish with him. The second thing I'm going to talk about is where to cast the bait. This is the Davis Canal and it's a big canal and there are plenty of places to fish. So how do you know where the fish are going to be? Well, if you pick the right spot, and you can just use some simple logic, which I'm going to show you in some illustrations in a minute, you can understand where the fish are going to be by the way the tides are running. And obviously it worked for me because here I've got this fish on the line and it felt pretty big and I was feeling pretty happy about it. So was it the fresh shrimp or was it the fact that I cast in the right spot or was it a combination of both? Probably both. So here I grab my net and I'm wondering what kind of fish it is and it turned out to be a really nice red drum. So here we go, bring him in the kayak and check him out. Now, he looks pretty good, but when I measured him, he was like 17 and three quarters inch or something like that. So he was just under slot, uh, what are you gonna do? We'll go back to fishing in the, uh, in the surf in a minute. So where to put your bait is important. This is Davis Canal and a channel below that's feeding into it during the rising tide. Now anything in that channel is going to get swept out into the main part of Davis Canal and the fish are going to be waiting there for the stuff getting pulled out so they can eat it. So that's where I put my bait and that's where I caught that fish. Now if it was the opposite of that and the tide was falling, the water would be coming down and also coming out of that channel at the bottom part. So I'd want to put my bait in that exact location right there or at the bottom part where the water is getting pulled out and the fish are looking for something to catch. I'm down here by the old, uh, on, uh, the new Oak Island Pier, I guess it's the new Oak Island Pier. And I, I, I got up this morning around 7.30, tried to get some pinfish. All I caught was a couple of little croakers, so all I got is a croaker. But I'm trying out the new rig and I wanted to see how far I could cast it. It's high tide now. And I was like, I'm sure I can cast it all the way to the end of the pier, but actually probably more like, <laughs> <laughs> there. <laughs> anyway, let's see if we can't catch a fish. All right, the old rig and all the crap that got all twisted around. Cut that all away, it's gone. Here's the new rig. Well, it starts with the Spudnik, and that's on a Monoshock leader. Yay, Monoshock leader. Now, we used to have the, the Spudnik going right to the braid. Now what we're doing is we're putting the ring here and the bead and going to another Monoshock leader of a good fair amount, which is getting tied to the braid with a blood knot. Now, the new rig itself here is just the rig and the steel leader and the hook. So this can slide down all the way, hopefully, well you get the idea, to the bead um, without getting twisted up because this is so short it shouldn't really get twisted up. And here's the illustration of what I just showed you. So basically we have that slider rig there to only the American fishing wire and then the bait. The blood knot is holding a monoliter to the top and then braid on that. So uh, less chance for anything to get tangled up, a much cleaner a rig altogether. So here it is in person. Now, let me show you what I do. Uh, I just put down my rod. Now my Spudnik's already out there, right? It's set. So I'm putting on my sliding rig here. And it's got sort of like this little opening. I'm going to show it to you there. And you can just kind of twist the, uh, the, the line around it and it'll kind of go around so it gets to the middle so that it can slide. Now watch how easy this slides when I just kind of pick it up there. Zooms through. So 
I will take my bait and I will put it onto that hook and then you will see it will slide out just like that. But if the fish decides to swim backwards, this is what happens. See it, how it holds that line and sort of tightens it? So the fish is not allowed to swim backwards. He can only swim forward and that's why it's called a one-way rig. Now, here's some more signs. If you're at the beach, look for the birds. <laughs> See that bird just hit the water? That means there's bait there. And if the birds are interested in the bait, that means there are fish. So fish there. Now, those birds should not be confused with this sign, which says Birdie's Beach Boot Camp, which I'm not sure what that is, but it was there. And last but not least, some turtle signs. Hey, watch out for the turtles. All right, that's it. See you next week.